if recording. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start by Evaluate. doing the thing on the parser. Well, on the, on the expression on the parser and where are you? I am on in the evaluator. Yeah, okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, so just for recording purposes, today we're gonna start with fixing your messages, just because uh, we are tired today. Uh, yes, sir. So, I guess it's like this. I'm actually not sure if we, if we are... Maybe we need to import this text.printf. Let's mm -hmm. see. And then we need show uh, label. Oh, yeah, label is already a string, so it's just label here. Oh, it's not. It is a text, so we need to pick a text and return a string. There is a function for that. So it's a text, and we want to go back to the... It's unpack. Unpack. Okay. Mm, I get this there adding this. Okay. Yeah, cool. let's add with errors or warnings. Attempted to apply uh, mm -hmm. value uh, this to something that is not a function. Wait, uh, what? To uh, object that does not oh, reference. Go, Nathan. Uh, I think object could be a problem. <laughs> Yeah, but this is the .NET DNA that Magenta is expressing right now. Yeah, but if you get objects in the language, then no, that's no. a huge problem. No, 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 no. Don't think of objects as objects. Think of an abstract entity floating in the universe. That's the <laughs> yeah, but if you, all, <laughs> if you also have objects, objects, then how do you know, right? Oh, man. Okay, let's change the word. Uh, apply value. <laughs> uh, the... the Error messages in .NET, they're like, um, reference, let me find one here. Oh, you can just put another S, man. It's fine. Here. Uh... Here. <laughs> this, is, this is the kind of error message you have in .NET. What does it mean? Wait, what? what object does it mean? reference not set to an instance. Wait. Object <laughs> reference not set to an, to an instance, instance of an object. Of an object. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? I have so no why? idea. <laughs> uh, so, think, of, think about this like you have ABC, like you have a class. Uh, let me do type ABC. That is a class. I'll do in F sharp. That is that has oh, like the no. Let is the one. Sorry. Let X. Oh, it just has like a something inside of it. Okay, and then like I don't know A B C. Member. Uh, a, oh, who cares? Uh, don't don't care about syntax. Okay, so like A B C blah blah blah. E, v is equal zero. That's it. And then let's suppose you try to set the ABC. But if it's a record or something that is nullable or an array or something like this, then if you try to set like this, like uh, uh, this is a record, but suppose this is another class, okay? And then like <clears throat> this is like constructing itself or whatever. D, E, I think it's better like this. Anyway, if you try to do this, Something like this, I don't know. Like it fails because, well, this is not a reference for an instance of an object. So it's not instantiated an object inside of a reference you're trying to set in something that is doable. So that's... Okay, so at the end of the day, the guilty is because of news. Yes. Yeah, I think we have some problems. Right. Uh, uh, the thing regarding application, I think it's inverted. Let me check. Do you know what would fix that, right? Te te tests, but it's fine. Uh... Prefer to live in the darkness. <laughs> uh, 
why is it the inverse? Uh, uh, saying the argument is not a function, right? It's saying that the argument is not a function. No, it's the opposite. Yeah, you're correct. This is arg. And also, reference is wrong because we don't have ones in our language. No, but Who cares about <laughs> loyalty to <laughs> It's the same thing if we had like mutable stuff. No, we won't. Ah, that's okay then. Okay. Uh, uh, wait, Magita, before you do that, uh, let's just see if these two error, these two that we just did before, they are compiling. And. Okay. This was there, right? it's, it, no, it's failing, but not because of that, because I need to add here. Okay, so no instance for printf text. Mm. Oh, we don't want printf. We want to. We don't want to print it. We want just to like oh, mode. Printf, right? Yeah, we want Is... something like as printf. I need to check if we do have that. So I would be really surprised if you didn't have that. I already used this once, but I always forget because I almost never use it. Uh, format string, isn't it? Uh, there, format string is a good name, but I, we want to some we want something like this, right? So like a string. Wait, from where are you using the printf? Is it inside some specific module? Oh, dude, yeah, printf is I/O, right? No, yeah, it's not I/O. No, think? it's yeah, it's R R, which is a printf type, whatever that is. Um. Okay, so can you try like printf dot as printf? Haskell printf to string. Let me just check this post. There is an sprintf function, so from where? That's the question. Who go? Okay, this guy is just joking. Then, cool. Awesome. Everybody's talking about text printf, for there's also formatting. Formatting. Dude, you have another library just to do <laughs> something that is... What the heck? <laughs> Why? Oh no, but this one is fancy, it's using builder. Cool. Oh man, who cares, dude? Just print shit. Just the mutable C garbage. Just use mutable C garbage. Yeah, man. Just do a thing full of moves. What cool woman. Oh, I know. Um... Yeah, there Just is an S print F, but the, I think it's from the full. Let me see. Jeez. Need to pack it back. Yeah, that was the problem. Okay, so remember that, that when we were talking about exceptions in Haskell, Magete? Mm -hmm. Remember that that was something called typable? No. Well, there there is something called typable, which is kind of like bad because it is kind of leaking the abstraction of the type system. And this printf stuff is also doing that. So if you look at this, read this part. The return value is either a string or an IOA, which should be the IO uh, unit. unit. But Haskell's type <laughs> system makes it hard. Yeah, so this oh. is returning two pot potentially one of two things, but this is not representable in the, oh, I see. In the I type see. system, which means that this printf type probably is doing some type of stuff under the hood, which is indeed doing unsafe perform IO under the hood. Awesome. But now we do have the message, so... Oh, back. why don't we just do a unsafe perform IO then? So it's clear. <laughs> uh, E-condition. So... Uh, uh, 
the condition uh, this is not a bool okay is that is that it for the evaluator I think yes I think it is type checking then yeah. Oh, actually, let me build thing. Let me change the name of this. Okay. Wait. Mm -hmm. What the hell is this? Where are you? I can't These see. three lines. This is wrong. <laughs> uh, let me see. What evol the hell? Inv evol inv Variable label, then we do a uh, case. Where is the other the case? <laughs> oh, yeah, there's no just so, take a look on the history. Like, you have a maybe yeah. we deleted what the something. Hell? <laughs> yeah, we could probably have deleted something. Uh, I already forgot. Yvonne needs to return a result value. Uh, the lookup is going to the environment, right? Where is the environment? Oh, here. Oh, just the var. And then it's picking a value. So it's just this. Yeah. Is that... But how the heck oh, this we is... Need to I, do I think queue, I did right? this by, uh, by accident when I was cleaning the code because it's throwing an error here. Patting match matches are, not ex are non-exhaustive. Uh, just one thing. What does the peer here does if there's no do notation? Uh, there's no denotation, but uh, we are, um, how can I explain this? This is a, some type, this is a type of a value, right? Do you agree? This is, well, this is result, right? No, no, this is value. Look at what? here. This is this, right? If we close your label body environment, this is a value, correct? Okay, yes, yes, that's right. We need the result. And then no, okay, but why does the peer work in that way? In that case, it's just a normal function. It's no, not like it's because peer does not is not coming from the monad. It's coming from the applicative. We oh, don't okay, need do notation. We could use return here, by the way. It would work mm -hmm. with I also, but but uh, we need the peer here because we need to wrap this in result, okay. which is an either behind the hood. Uh, Okay, so I did. The evaluator is wrong. Next is type checking. Okay, so the first one is to type check a variable. So we do a lookup. Okay, so we need the same imports from before. Typer. You can start adding the printfs. Um, I get the. I will mm. help you. Where is the thing? Here. So it's back. This. Could not find variable. Uh, do we put errors here on the type system as well, or do we put anything else to identify? That's a good question. <laughs> um. I didn't look into Elm. That Nathan shared last week. Um, what is your opinion on this, Nathan? On oh, what? Uh, Mageta asked, should we have a differentiation between errors, like the the prefix here, errors in the evaluator from the errors on the type checking? And if he has, how? Oh. I see, like type checking the error, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, we could, could have add some, some type type. Yeah, type. Yeah, type. <laughs> it's gonna be very, very long though. I don't no, know just I type. Like just type. <laughs> yeah. Okay, type error. We could do. Can we print these things with like colors? Probably. I don't know how to that do that at the be, moment. That would be really. Cool. Let's let's search that. I think we can do simply by with some special characters, I guess. Yeah, like uh, like colors and em in emojis would be nice. Change color of a string. Uh, 
Oh, okay, it's with the oh man. <laughs> okay, oh, but yeah. uh, if that's the case, then we don't need to do. Okay, then we just do. I on the print. If those are uh, Linux specific. They probably are, right? Yeah. That's man, look at look at this. Though. It's a penguin on a on a flower field, man. What the heck? Oh, <laughs> That's pretty cute, actually. <laughs> That's Photoshop A AF, man. Run. Are you saying penguins can't enjoy flowers? Oh, yeah. Wait. Where is the code? This doesn't require any any extra libraries. Oh, this is oh, super it's just, cool. It's, yeah, like that's, that's it's, the it's the same thing as Emacs, man. Okay, okay, because the other guy was suggesting to use a library here. Yeah, I think it's a terminal thing, right, Magetta? Yeah, it's terminal based. Well, for now, I think this is worth it, though. Where is the red? Yeah, here's the red. Actually, I think it's on C. Like, uh, that's on C colors. Yeah, it is on C colors, the guy is saying in the post here. Uh, it's syntax dash on C. On C colors, yes. Yeah, let's um, let's do that then. I'm gonna go to the evaluator, and you're gonna go to the type checking. Yeah, just no, 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 dude. Just go. Okay, yes, you can do it there, but <laughs> uh, but isn't it better just to better match this thing? If it's mean? a left, it's an error, right? If it's a left, it's an error. Yeah, that's correct. So why don't you just go on the ending thing and append the string with that? Because that's dependent types, right? And we don't have that. What? Yeah, we want you want me to pre-fulfill a value in a type. No man, I want like on the on the back on the ending, on the first thing that calls and returns the thing the prints the user the function that oh. calls the eval. Just append the string. Just unpack the left and append the string. Wait, uh, let like, me try to re do what you said. So you want to create a function? Let me follow you. Uh, yeah, okay. No, no, no. Like, you where are returning going? strings as zeros, right? Yeah. yeah. Somewhere you will match on that to see the write and print. Yeah, so we should That's... do like the entry point function, the type checks, then it, you know? Oh, you're talking about the main function. Ah. Yes. Okay, so it's in app main. Okay. So the first thing that we should do is to type checks. So type. So we're gonna call we need we need the typer. And then we're gonna do type check. Um I don't know. Uh, we need an expression here, right? So we literal L unit, I guess. Then we do a case. We do a case. And if it is uh, a left, then we have an error. Then we can uh, concat what you said, right? So it's gonna be yeah, append a concat, yes. Yeah, concat e with uh, no e is the the later one. So it's gonna be this, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna do print this. But if it's an a right, oops, if it's a right, then we're going to have a type, uh, which for now we're going to just ignore. Mm -hmm. Then we do another case, evaluating. Are you? Yeah. And XPR. And later on, I'm going to make this expression be written for, like we're going to be able to provide the expression from a file or from the command line, which is cool. Then we do this. Another question. We don't have... On the command line, we should do the REPL, right? On uh, the command line, we should do the REPL. What do you mean? Yeah, the REPL sends to the parser. The parser makes the ST and sends to the thing. Uh, let's replace evolve with evolve with environment. Replace all. 
Oh, no, no, no. Oh, done. man. Done. Yeah, but the types, like, you change the type as well. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, you can see evolve. Oh, it needs to be case sensitive. Can... Yes. Okay. And then evolve, which is going to be down here. Missing. <laughs> Not be... net tooling, right? Like, it yes. can do the rename. Refactoring. <laughs> Even though I think it doesn't work for a properly. No, it doesn't. Uh, and which which is not a problem because I don't know how to use it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it was my first time using the debugger, man. I mean, the, I'm joking. I used the debugger before, but it's pretty. Okay, now, oops. Now we can go to the main again. Evolve. We don't need this map anymore, so it's clean. Then we do a case of so the, if this answers an error, then we do the same. Uh, else, okay. Um, in now I want to understand why it is complaining. I have do. No idea. Do, don't you? Oh no, it's uh, I.O., right? Yeah. And okay, so it's complaining that... Uh, oh, it's not how we concat. This is not a string. This is a text. So, oh. text... <laughs> Back... Back cons append. Okay. Cool. Uh, data text. You forgot to import. This is something that Go has that I like. We don't have to worry about imports, which is cool. What do you mean by that? When you save a file in Go and you already installed the library, like data.txt, for instance, at the point that you save it, it's going to already add to the import list. Wait, okay, that's, that's not a Go thing. That's an editor thing, right? I think it works in Emacs and VS Code, so I'm guessing it works everywhere. Yeah, so that's the editor T. Yeah. No, but why doesn't the other packages for the languages work that way then? That's a good question. Oh, actually they do. Well, um, not, in, not installing, but you using, and then they import for you. Okay, let's On go back Jet to the typing now. It works like that. Okay, I'm gonna check all these warnings later. So it's gonna be a type error, right? Uh, don't error. do the dash, man. Just do type. Yeah, like it's a different thing. Okay, so let's start adding that. I'm gonna add. Uh... Okay, so evaluation is gonna be just error, right? And then the typer can just gonna be type error. Yeah. Okay, so next one is type check in e abstraction. So back printf. So body type of type this this does 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 not match annotated return type this. So the first one is. Uh, the type, the body RT. type of type. Show return. This correct? The body, body the type. The body type of type. No, it's not correct. Yeah, something. Oh, body type is not just the return type. Nice. Okay, next. Okay, so type check any application. So the first one. Is when the argument type does not match the parameter type. So, type mismatch 
between parameter of type this and argument of type this. Arg type show checking please parameter. Okay, next. The next Wait, one is. Do you guys remember what from... is that to do annotation? We need to do reduction at some point to the potential type of expression. Uh, I remember this being the thing that we, we talked about in the last session. About the OR function of reduction that is right here. This reduce type. Because you are not doing that right now, and because you're not doing that, we are like we are not handling some cases that we should. Didn't he change that message? I'm pretty sure like someone said it was like bad and we improved it, right? Uh, wait, can you repeat? Uh, I'm pretty sure someone noticed that the message was bad and then we improved it, right? Was that the improved one that we did? Uh, that's a good question. And by the way, there's something that I should have checked before. Did I co uh, pull and push stuff? Okay, 21st of, yeah, this was the last one. Yeah, so I am, we didn't. So this is the, 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 the final version. Oh, uh, uh, I don't know, this is not a f function. This one is hard. How can you say this? People? Mm, I don't know. Man. You want to say that something is on a function? It's the same thing, right, as the runtime one? Uh, let me check. It is? Are you sure? Attempt to apply what? value s to s that is on a function. Okay. Attempt to apply. Oh, we don't have the argument at this point to apply, I don't know, a value to, that is not a function. Okay. Uh, can you change the to do for me? Say yes. something like, remember to reduce fun type before checking its type. Remember to reduce fun type before asking it's type. Nice. Okay, next. Uh, e condition. Okay, so type mismatch between uh, then branch of type. Yeah, yeah, that one we can give something more useful, right? And else branch of yes. type. Like we could say what the types are. Mm -hmm. Show then type. Show uh, else type. Okay, so. Also, I think we could change something on the last message. Like we are saying condition, right? I think that makes sense for us that are implementing because we are calling condition, right? Yeah. But for the user, is a if expression. Oh, no, I mean, look at the last message. Predicate needs to be a Boolean condition. Oh, you mean you're talking about the last one? Okay. Predicate needs to be a Boolean in if expression. Predicate this of type this show cong type. Okay, e type abstraction. No, we don't have errors here. Oh, you, oh, this is the error message that we were talking about, I guess. <laughs> well, uh, oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, let me see. 
Wait, so where are you, man? Are... I lost you. Yeah, it's because they are the... Okay. the same problem. Yeah, they have the same. Okay, so what about this guy? Expected kind for the application does not match. Expected kind for the application does not match. Expect expected kind this for the application does does not match with this. So this is expected kind. And this is kind. Next one. Back. Def. Cannot do a type application with a value that is not a type abstraction. That one is tricky to <laughs> give a message, man. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So what is this error? Is when we are trying to do the stuff, uh, try to to get the f type of a function, a function type, the function type, and we get something that is different enough for all. Yeah, like how do we call in a language the type of structure, right? For I don't all. think we usually. So as you can tell, we call for all. Like, where? In which language? No, no, in our language, it's uh, until this point, we call type oh, no. abstractions and formulas for us. No, no, yeah, that could be it. But I'm just thinking if you have the example of another language in which people have like type abstraction and they call that something, right? Instead of type abstraction. But that's the thing. Oh, I don't think they you. usually do, right? Can like, because you, that's the thing. The language that we usually do, uh, they don't have to pass explicit stuff, right? And the other ones, I think they call just functions, like TypeScript and such. Um, I don't know if I would, I, I think it would be kind of misleading calling that function though. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wonder what Rust does, right? Because Rust also takes the thing. Okay, so let's just call it type abstraction then for now. Show. Okay, next. Okay, now it's kind checking, which is the most mind bending one at the moment. Bound type variable. Yeah, so if you have a T variable, which is a type variable. Right, you do a lookup in the environment. It's exactly what Nathan said the last day. In the, in the same way that we do what we do for type checking for is expressions, we do kind checking for type checking. So kind of similar. We can, just, we can just add its label, right? Add what, sir? Its label. Oh, and by the way, we forgot to add the labels, Magita. Yeah, but the label that I mean is like the name of the type variable that is unbounded, right? Oh, and by the way, should we change the colors if we get a problem with type checking or something like that? We are using red I... for everything. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's okay. Like, maybe you should change for warnings, right? Man, like, our language yeah. is going to have warnings? <laughs> well, languages have warnings, right? Things that don't <laughs> kill you, but... <laughs> for example, like... Uh, let's suppose we add recursion, and then we see that you are not using the thing, right, as a recursive function. That could be a warning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so unbound, gonna be um, back, printf, unbound type variable, this. And I also noticed that some of them we have dots and some other, we, the others we don't. <laughs> let's let's have a convention. Yes. Yeah. Unbound variable in. 
wait, this what is this was written? Could not find variable uh, this No, this is also wrong. This should be like this. Okay. And this should be unbound. Unbound variable type. Okay. And now here. Wait, isn't just unbound variable? Yeah, it was could not find uh, the variable type this in the environment. Unbound variable type. What is a variable type? Like, uh, it's the type of a variable. We pick the, the the invariable types environment, which is a map between a text and a type. Then we do a lookup with the label. And then if we don't find in the, in the environment, then we throw the error. Yeah, but I mean, unbound variable type. With variable type, we mean the type of a given variable, right? Like this? No, no, that, no that's not the thing. Uh, we are saying that a type of a given variable is unbound, right? Yeah. Why don't we just use the same unbound variable x? Because this is because then we're gonna get confused if this is no 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 no. There there is a type variable right here. If you take a look on the other, it's a type variable. No, 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 we're, go we're gonna get confused. Oh, uh, oh well, I we see. Do also, we also have this thing to differentiate, that's true. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, that's the involved environment? Yeah, and this is oh. the type checking environment. Yeah, but why would we get confused? Because one has type error, yeah, and that's the a... runtime one, it's not even supposed to happen. Uh, unbound variable. Uh this in the environment and yeah, that's like that a little let me yeah okay 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 so typer okay dot dot <laughs> dot dot oh, unbound type variable uh, in the environment. Okay, so this is going to be label. Okay, next. T arrow. So T arrow. Mm -hmm. Expression arrow must have kind star and it has some legal writing on the rest. And it has this. Instead of just looking. Wait, what is this right kind of? Why 99? 99. You mean this? Yeah, like, what is the right kind that the... Like, what yeah, does so, make this? Yeah, maybe is a function that picks a default value, right? Uh, a function in something that is a maybe oh the function is right and if this is nothing then it's gonna return the default if this is just then it's gonna like unwrap the just and pass this function to it um okay so what about this one so we have uh, when you're doing the arrow we need to have a, a star to a star right which makes sense but then when you have something different, um, expression error has must kind star, star to star. I think I'm gonna have to do like this, star to star. And it has, um, this. Then we do two things, and then we're gonna have to do, uh, I don't know. Left, right. Yep. Next, T for all. For all should return star, but this is something different. Okay, so this is gonna be a. I don't know. A kind, whatever. 
but this has this okay we already have the pack in the printf okay less sh less shoe errors than t application so we need to have an error k for t application and we need to check if k1 is equal to kind arg yeah to i guess this so. one it's the most important right um I so kinds know. don't match in the application. So uh, argument or maybe kind argument this does not match uh, expected kind expected kind this. So this is the kind arg. And this is uh, K1, K1. And if we have something different than arrow K when we're doing the abstraction kind, uh, every fucking lambda that we add, we have a yes. error message for that. Kind apps. Okay, done. I'm surprised that the evaluator has only three mail messages. <laughs> and in theory, they shouldn't happen, right? <laughs> uh, the condition. I'm calling that test, but this is wrong. This is cond. Yeah, we, we miss a few things in here. Uh, and I think this is also maybe wrong. Yeah, let's call this other. Uh, this is not fun value. This is other. Ah. Uh, yeah. Wait, there it's the one that the thing's not a function, right? But why would we print a function? We will not print a function, right? We will print the oh okay yeah the the thing here. Anyway, so now it's working correctly. Let's just see if it's working fine. In the the thing here. Yeah. Okay. Just need to fix a few warnings later. Oh, well, let's fix now, man. Um, there is a shadowing warning in. Here, uh, which line? Oh, this. Um, Done. Oh, kind. Okay. And this also is the same thing that we you know, were talking before. Okay, last warning. So, typer. Uh, so it's saying that having this. Is Don't redundant. Win. Why is that redundant? Uh, oh, yeah. Because uh, we are already importing um, the wait. whole module. Yeah. Is it? yeah, I think it is because of that. It's also saying that map is redundant now. Oh, it makes sense. It's because you're not using the map anymore here. Oh, okay. Let's see. Okay. The last I one is called. We... You only have cond now. Oh, it's uh, also because of shadowing stuff. So this guy. Yeah. Okay. I think we don't have any warnings. Okay. Beautiful. What is that thing? Okay, that's the thing that doesn't go away, right? Yeah. This no, warning. I need to. Dis I need. I can research on how to get this one then. Uh, like remove this one. There is a way. Um. <laughs> So, so what we have left what well, let's make a list oh yeah commit first but let's make a list of the stuff we still need to do so we so can plan fixed error messages in evaluate and type okay okay good so let's go to the org file in the docs yeah. so we have features features so, so I think we are done with this 
thing. We already yeah. already surpassed whatever. Uh, whatever. We... It to Dom. Yeah, I don't. I'm not in Emacs though, so I think it's like this. Yeah, just just rename. Yes. We... Ti, we don't. <laughs> we didn't do that. Uh, we have algebraic data types, which is uh, interesting. We kind of have... No, we, are, we, we have this already. Oh, we don't, right? Not really. I lost it. Oh, wait. Uh, Let's see, recursive types we don't have. Prelude library with immutable data structures and built-ins. This will be kind of hellish. I, I kind of think, think like... So. Okay, we're not going. We're doing going to do this in Haskell, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On interpreted, I don't think it's a problem. Like, if it was like compiled, we would have to do this kind of stuff <laughs> in like our own language. So, it's another. It's a whole other level. Uh, um, we have. We, we can. We have two options, I guess. We can continue the type operators slash. Uh, so fixing the reduction part, we have also, again, always add testing, add parsing, or go to algebraic data types, ADTs. I prefer to go here. Wait, 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 but how can we like go to the next one if we haven't finished the type operators? No, because no, the only it, difference... it's taking order, right? Mm -mm. Does anyone... Oh, no, wait, Lemus was asking if we like could do something else, right? Yeah, we can. We just need to accept that our at this point, because our type operators implementation is incomplete, oh, we're gonna dude. have some errors at some point. I think we could be confused after, man, like a lot. Uh, we're we're not finished with the parser. What do we need to do there? Uh, we need to finish. I think the for all, and we need to do the e type abstraction, e type application. Let's do that now, man. I'm tired of like just thinking because we should be able to just like write things and test like all the way down. Yeah, we should. Not write tests. I'm talking about like literally <laughs> coding. <laughs> <laughs> Pay attention to what I'm saying. I'm not saying I am in favor of tests. Yes. Okay then. So let's go there. Yeah, but we need to think about some stuff and not only the syntax. Uh, for example, now we have type abstraction, right? Like T abstraction. Yeah. Uh, so that's not a thing I think you would like to use in Linked, right? Uh, in the sense of, I will not have a syntactic part that will represent that like one to one. I will not have a type that generates that, right? For example, if you take a look at Haskell, what generate those are like these data declarement statements, right? Those type mm. declaration stuff. I don't, I don't know if I, I got your your problem. Can you repeat that? Uh, so the abstraction, it's a lambda, right? Yeah. But we never write this lambda in Haskell or Cam or REST, yeah. right? So usually we want to like make them uh true uh what's the name like this type declarations right so we also need to get these in order like oh instead of having one expression now we have a list of declarations that is either a type declaration or a value declaration right yeah we're gonna have to, th to think how we're gonna parse that also Another thing we can do on the parser right now is making let bindings. Yeah, that's come also there, like because we have the let and the let in, right? Yeah. We would also use like at least the let, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know how that would be in S expressions, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's easy, right? Like we only have a list of like S expressions. You have a list of S expert. Okay, it could be like the Latin Haskell. I think that would be the same, right? Uh, let's let's go in a file actually. Yeah, we need to change our AST, man. 
Well, to do let's? I don't think so. Of course. Why? Uh, well, because dude. both are... No, dude, you just do... You just add to the context. Um, can you... Okay, I... yeah, so yeah, never mind. On the parsing, yeah, you will need to do that. And then you just add to the virtual variable in the context, right? Yeah, we, we need uh, another data type, right? Yeah, that's For right. the let. Yeah, like for, a let team. Like for top level declaration, right? Yeah. So, can you explain? I, I didn't get why we need a different one, but I also don't. I don't uh, can we write a let example for think me? Above is like, to... Yeah, let, let me. Go to functions.sw. Wait, Lemus, because there are two things, man. Uh, that is the let in. That's an expression, right? And Let's that's just another function. case on our expression data type, but we also need a different data type for declarations, right? Actually, because a file. Let's just do the, the Latin Lisp. Right? It's like this, right? Yeah. So this. Oh, let's just do this. And then here you have the body. So like... Oh, but <laughs> why did I do this? Oh, wait, I should have done like this. This is better. No, dude, uh, like... The this is not the Lisp, man. <laughs> No, it's not Lisp, but it's not Lisp. This is not Lisp. This is no, but dude, aware. there's a difference here. I don't think we have a use for the in anywhere, Lil. Yeah. No, it's, what do you mean by use, man? It's just syntax. We we, we uh, choose. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh well, yeah, you're right. But I think it's pointless if you are using as expression. And, and I think it's out of place, man. Like in as expressions, I don't think they looks. Okay, here. Like, Man, if you're gonna do you're it here, you're talking about a language that has a for all in the middle. <laughs> no, like, if it's like this, it's better. But oh, yeah, this here. Hello, for me, I I prefer the 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 combination of the in later as in Ocamon and Haskell, but that's fine. Because dude, like things in the middle of S expressions, they're not. I don't I don't think there are okay option like doing this unless it's something like this like in like a key oh. but that's a totally different story right like those are a bunch of like optional stuff like it's a whole yes. new feature yes yeah but or it can be just sugar because it's ignore some of them you can do like ignorables as well like you can do them just as like something to give like Labels, like, but they're totally ignorable. Okay, so let's do the... Uh, I think it's too lispy, but let's do the the, 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 the lispy let then. But, but that's... <laughs> isn't that the reason why we are using, like, S expression this much? To be lispy? Mm -hmm. No, but the, I, this was the no, extent just... of lisp in Silverware. Now we are adding more stuff of lisp. Yeah, but... Uh, your question was, why do we need to do a, uh, add a new thing to the ST, right? Yeah, 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 that was my question. Uh, because you need to add, like, you need, a, you need to mar mark this expression as an expression that you need to compute something different. And what do you need to compute different? Uh, here, pick these things and add those things to the context. Yes. And exec and evaluate the body. So. Yeah, so it's basically, uh, the let is just a data type with only one case which is a list of expressions, and an expression is the return. Wait, can you no, repeat that? A, li a list yeah. of expressions in the body. I'm thinking about let... Uh... Yeah, no, 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 wait, no, uh, you are confusing. Couple, right? List oh. of couples. Wait, wait, why are we making these a different data type? What? Oh, these, right? They should be inside the expression, right? Like extending expression. Oh, okay. So let, and then it, this is a tuple constructor, right? And yeah. then you do, I don't know, text, because yes. we're using text. This and this. The body, right? Yes. Yeah. And then we just like add this stuff in the, in the context and then just execute this, evolve this. Yeah, let's go to the features and add that. So type operators, we're going to also have let. Um, let bindings. Yeah, that will be a cool because the language starts to be more useful. 
more well it already can do that right but it's just more annoying <laughs> yeah okay so let's do that so let's go to the ast which is here and uh, the expression now will contain a new member of the family which is an elet Uh, okay, so evaluator. Oh, what? we can do monads now. <laughs> no, we cannot. Oh, well, we can't. We can't. We can't. Uh, we don't have macros. If we had macros, we could. Oh, uh, yeah, but that's yeah, but macros is very, very far on the plan. It's uh, like wait, what one year from now. <laughs> uh, we could use uh, we could like define our own monads uh, with let and macro. Yeah, because like, the let is already it. a monad. In like in, from s some sorts. Yeah, like the normal let is an identity, identity mode. Uh, okay, so that's it. Now let's just add that thing on the. Do you want to do the? Yeah, let's do the the parser first. Let, let's fix the parser with I the think cases. I think bottom have. up is easier because the evaluator is the simplest one, and then the type checking is the second uh, easiest one. Okay. And then I the just kind checking is like... I'm getting pieced of the parser broken. Oh, that's actually another question. Uh, do these interfere with... Or uh, par? I don't think so. With kind and types? I don't think so also, but I want to ask anyway. Wait, what? Yeah, uh, if the adding this e, this let binding feature, this is this is, will not change. We're not gonna have to type, touch type checking and and kind checking, right? I don't know, but like it's pretty easy. Like it's one of the easiest thing we are doing. Mm. Because uh, if, what what happens if you do a let inside a function, right? And then the function oh. is returning a certain type. You need to know if the return of the let is the same type as what you're expecting. Yeah, that's the body, right, of the let. Yeah, that's the body of the let. Uh, help me here, Lemus. Uh, how do I? I think it's insert, right? But how do I insert multiple? I would need to reiterate, right? Uh, In this thing. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. We need this. to. Oh, you can do four. This. Yeah, it's it's not it's not the four that you know, but it's yeah, the work. <laughs> like, exactly. It's like this, right? So for you provide now the bindings. Bindings. Uh -huh. uh, I'm gonna do a do here. Then you do this. Uh, and then this is the function that you want. Okay. But wait a second. Um, yeah, I, I we need to insert the thing. Uh, my okay, God, this be lambda, right? Hmm? There are What's at least two details, man. The first one is that you need to like we need to specify like what are the scoping rules because I have no idea what they should be for the like multiple uh, bindings on the Latin, and also we have the thing about. Oh fuck, I think I just forgot. Uh, well, if I remember, I will, I will tell. Oh, okay, yeah. We cannot just iterate and go evaluating stuff because things could fail, right? So we need a way to short secret stuff. Uh, you cannot just iterate. Okay, I because see. Because it's I not see. a pure yeah, language, I see, right? I see, I see. So. Wait, what you said is really important. So we need. Yeah, we need to change this thing then, because we need to evolve everything first. If some of them fail, we stop. Uh, and after... I think the, the fold can help us, right? If yeah, we are doing evaluations inside Oh, it's a fold. map, right? Okay, it's a... Yeah, not it's a, a map. Yeah, it's a, not a map because you can chart circuit, right? It's a fold. Um, I don't know how the fold will, will save us, Monata. Because it's because, because like it's we are folding through expression, right? And yeah, we will not like short circuit the fold itself. He will go through all the thing, but after something, he will not evaluate anymore if he got an error, right? 
It would be awesome if you could do a four but and then it a break. will be ugly. Like it will not be nice at all. Uh, no, there is me, a way. Let me try to this. write this in F sharp and you translate. Let me try to think how I would do this. I'm totally sure that the functions that we need are for or traverse. That that mm. is, I know. Well, let me see traversal obligative. Traverse. And this is traverse. We could do another function mm. outside that does the check. Okay. No, the four is literally flipping the traverse. Cool. Can you give an example, Amos? It's because usually when I'm using four, I am I want to I'm doing some sort of I/O, so I do this, and then oh, I have a bunch of stuff that I need, I need to execute I/O, but I do, I don't care about the results. Then you do four underscore. But in here, we do care about the results because we want to have the thing back, right? Yeah. I still don't get it what the FTB means on the end. Well, this is a value of type B. This is an F, which means that we have the value B wrapped in an applicative. Isn't it better to make another function that is recursive? That's also a possibility. We can do it recursively. Like I think it's easier, man, because but you just I, do. I think we are really missing code. something because. What the heck, man? How harder? Uh, I think this this is harder than what we can do with fun, uh, uh, high level functions, because we are we have an either right. Either is a monon, either either is a bunch of stuff. So we should be able to use a very clever solution to this problem. I just don't know, because I'm too naive in Haskell yet. Well, let's think here. But rec recursion totally works. Yeah, it would be better. Not sure if it's easier, but we can do the short circuiting, right? Yeah, I can. can't think the other way, so I cannot evaluate if it's harder or not, because I can't think the other way. So let's see. Uh, we need to pass that thing. Can we describe our problem first? Like, uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, Magetta, what would you suggest for like scoping rules in the Latin? Wait, say it again. What would you suggest for scoping rules in the Latin? For example, if I have the first binding, when I bind that, does that add to the scope of the second binding? Oh, okay, I see. Like, uh... or they are all in parallel, right? Mm -hmm. I think we can, because in Lisp you have the let and the let star, right? Is that mutually recursive? Yeah, so that's the problem. Like, the let is parallel. So you cannot assign, like, I don't know, something on the scope of the other. Okay. But that's not the letting, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we would have three in this case. We would have the let star, which is mutually recursive. And then you have... And then I think we could do let plus, which is the letting that like takes one scope and applies on the next. Like, oh, later. okay. So we do the first binding that adds to the scope of the second one, and the last one adds to the scope of the body, oh, right? What about we do this then? Uh, let's go to types, and then we can do. Um... Wait, I cannot see you. Doing stuff, right? Oh, let me let me where are you? Where are you? Um, uh, types. 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 What about this? Let kind. What is that? Yeah, oh. and then we Wait, have the kinds right. of the thing discriminated here. Oh, uh, what is that? Like, uh, in. Oh man. Man, man, that that doesn't sound like something <laughs> nice to do. Like why not what different is the purpose nodes? of let kind? Oh, it's because we want to have the the kind the let of of the yeah just to team. annotate here like it could be a string whatever. No 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 man why don't we use different nodes? What? Why man? It's all the same thing. You're just gonna like match on the thing. In Haskell, man. the let is actually both. Not uh, it can be let rec and let, and you don't have to specify. Okay. Uh, but in like, um, because in, things are like recursive by default, right? Yeah, but uh, I don't know what is our preface in this case. Do we want to do that? Name. 
No, I mean, that's just a question of like code, right? That doesn't change what the program you do. But I mean, if you are doing tagging like this, why not different nodes that already handle that? Otherwise, you have a huge function that matches. Uh, what you're gonna do? Time. The different. What What is your proposal for doing a different like this? Literally, yeah, let yes. wreck and let let and let. Uh... Yeah, it doesn't change anything. Man. It's the same thing, literally. Well, it facilitates parsing later, I guess. <laughs> I don't know for parsing, but we end up with like uh, smaller functions, right? Oh, that's for sure. That's for sure. In when that you're would, doing the, the better be the same thing. No, it will not. Uh, when you it do will. have when you have like this in three separate uh, some cases of the, the expression data type, then we're not gonna have to like oh we're mm. gonna have because if we do your way, uh, Maget, you're gonna have to mm. do another case off inside here. No, you just do matching here. Uh, oh yeah, he's right. He's the same, Natal. <laughs> it is indeed the same. So it's a string with an expression. Uh, and then we're going to pick the bindings with the eighth that I don't want to annotate. Screw it. So what would that be, we think? So we need to pick... Uh, the other environment. So let's do... Okay, let's produce this thing. Which one we're going to do first? The let? The normal let? I think the normal let is easier. Normal let? I don't think we can do the others right now. What? I don't think we can do the mutually recursive right now. No, the mutually recursive we can't, but we can do the layered. Like the first one applies on the second and so on. That one we can. Uh, normal let. Let me see. So we pick let new wave equals. Okay, just just a, an ask a question at the or my get. After mm -hmm. we evaluate the bindings one by one, we start circuiting. And after having the new environment, adding those, we just evaluate the body with the new environment. Is that correct? Wait, say, say it again. Uh, I think it's this. Uh, so my question is, mm -hmm. after we pick the bindings and then we evaluate mm -hmm. like the, the, the expressions that they are mapped to, yes. and then we check that they are good, mm -hmm. then uh, we create a new environment, adding those, Yes. Then uh, we evaluate the, the the body with this new environment. Yes, that's true. I what think... do you want? Okay, that, that I see what you did there. Yeah, yeah but I don't that's... know if this works. <laughs> that's uh, kind of like I don't know. We're gonna discover. We can disco we're gonna discover um, at a moment here. Oh, I see. Yeah, you're evaluating first, and then the do will handle this, right? Yeah, I am kind of cheating because I am exploring the fact that, oh, I, this, according to the type, type of notation, if you take a look on the type of notation here, of the for, we need this function to end with an applicative, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I am exploring. I am exploring the fact that we are using an either, which is applicative. So, But this is already being unwrapped later. So the return is an either, of mm -hmm. something. This something is a list in our case because we are we are providing a list at the beginning, which is bindings. So we're gonna have an either of a list. This error right here will get rid of the either, which means that this is a list. Then we do the same, right? But this time around, what we care is to insert things in the environment. And I'm doing the same trick of using the return to wrap in, in the either, and then getting the either unwrapped in here. Go on, Ata. Uh, Lemons, but besides the short circuit stuff, you also need to thread the environment through the iterations of expressions. 
because the first binding will be available in the second binding and so on. What? Oh, Wait, say it again, Nathan? Fuck. Uh, <laughs> like the scope thing, like the mm -hmm. second binding will have access to the first one. No, 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 but that's the normal let. Oh, okay. Yeah, and the, the other one is the layered. And that one is not, this approach doesn't work. Wait, wait, can you uh, like put the examples there somewhere? Yeah, we can go back to see functions. That because you, you said three different ones, right? Yeah, I, oh, let me No, you cannot, no, but in a normal two. let, they, they, normal they don't let touch this. each other. They don't touch each other, Nathan. So you, they you don't? basically. They don't. This is don't. what you're thinking is let star. Oh, yes. Okay. Which is, but this is like way no, more. No, let plus, isn't yeah, it? No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. Wait, wait, wait. Let plus doesn't exist. That's why I'm saying. Let okay. star normally in Lisp, it is basically, I can do this. Yeah. Uh, I cannot do this because, well, <laughs> anyway, you, you got it, right? Oops, sorry. But anyway, like, I can do this with let star. Yeah. Because this is mutually recursive. But what we want here is like Just we let. can also do this, let plus, which it would be layering. This evolves on this, but you cannot do like I don't know. Uh I don't know. F G H J. Uh I don't know. I, uh it's true and then I do this. Like uh, I you see like I would you guys just fine. Why would we need like the layered one and the not layered one? Just I fine. never seen the layered one. No, it doesn't opinion. exist. Oh, it doesn't but, exist. Okay. Yes, <laughs> it's like I'm just reading. That's the only purpose. Because I don't see much of the sense. Like, if we have the layered one, to have the like normal one. Oh, it's just reading. It's for the same reason you have when. Wait, but they don't do the same thing, right? No, they don't. That's that's what I'm saying. When is like literally an if that only scopes for one case. Like that's the the same point here. Like you have oh. this, so you read that it's layering on the on one degree. Like okay, this I cannot do this here. Wait, I, I don't. I'm not getting uh, the use case of. Yeah. Use. Can you repeat? Just Can read I'm the not ability. The when. Just just read the ability. Like when? What is when? When is an if, right? Yes. So when is an if without else? You mean like as a quadding? No, dude. No, man. Just reading. Like you literally read code. Like that's it. No, I I don't know what the when is like. Oh, okay. the Can you when give an is a, is an when, if that does doesn't have a, an else branch. Yeah. When oh. is an if without else? Yeah. Okay. This is this is lack of letters, Nata. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like one more, like for example, one less. That's the same thing. Yeah, for it's also the same thing. Uh, like in Lisp, there's a bunch of these functions that they are the same, but they are just like okay, you look and then you already know what it does. Like, and why do I say the layered here? Because well, you don't need to worry if there's something like down there that is defined down there that is defined up here, like that's being used up here or what vice versa. It's just I... one way down, you see? But anyway, wait. if you don't want to do Wait, that's wait, I just wrong. want to understand. The plus is giving us the meaning that, oh, JCJ is definitely down there. Is that it? No, no, no. This wouldn't be possible with the let plus. That's what I'm saying. The let plus is just to give you the meaning. Okay, I, there's, I have the guarantee that reading this, there is nothing down there that is defined up here. That is mutually recursive. It oh, is always like just for going. Yes, it's just going for like a and then v's and then v's. You see? Wait, but you're like, not. I could do this. This is fine on the let plus. Yeah, but then what is the difference between let plus and just this? Well, I cannot do this on the let. Oh. Because you're evaluating all of them sequentially. Wait, like, but then sequentially. what's the difference between let plus and let star? The only difference is that let star just goes one the way down. I cannot do this. That's what I'm saying. I cannot do this. Oh, man, that's confused. No, no, but this is let's let star cannot do this, right? 
Let's start can do this because I'm picking the thing that is the Which final. Which one is mutually you... recursive, my git? This. Star. Star? Okay. Star is a mutually recursive. This is the uh, non mutually explain. recursive one. Let me let me explain. And let me this explain is the normal everything one. from the group. Yes. So each case, let's put it here. Let, let, star, let plus, and let star. So this is not possible in let star. So it needs to be kind of V, the let, nor, the normal let, sorry. Yeah, this is normal let. Oh, and by the way, it's 9 p.m., Maggot. Yeah, I need to go. But this is the normal let, right? Yeah. So nothing is defined in terms of other stuff here. Uh, let plus, you can define stuff in terms of other stuff if they've been previously defined. So, one, and then I can define A, B, C, and D, F. This is permissible. But I cannot, but, and then let star allows me to define stuff of, in terms of stuff that will be defined yet. Oh. So, that's the difference. Yeah, my point would be like... I can see why we need to differentiate between mutual recursive and others because mutual recursive by default could cause some stuff like yeah like this is the same thing is engulfed here but I'm, I'm saying like this is just a branch to increase readability yeah it's That's just more. to increase readability the, the plus I agree with that um yeah, I got I got the point. I totally got the point. The star is the most like permissive one. The plus is less permissive, and the let the normal let is the least it's permissive overall. Which means so, that this implementation that I did here is correct for the normal let. Yeah, for the normal let, that's yours. Where is there is evaluator here? Yeah, so you don't change the env because you you're not allowed, right? Which, by the way, I don't have any idea how we're going to do the let's star, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I need to find a cycle right here. It's just... that's That sounds very hellish, but okay. Yes. Cycle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Why do can... we have to find a cycle? Oh, what if you do this? Wait, I'm not seeing... Here. Then there is no... This doesn't evaluate, right? Yeah, this then we have a problem. Oh, I see. You want to... Yeah, you need to make bar. a graph and see if you can... <laughs> <laughs> you need to make a graph and use the algorithms that people yeah, use cycle in detection. programming, man. For yeah, cycle do, detection. I don't know, Floyd Warshow, something like this. <laughs> anyway, folks, I gotta go. Yeah. So I will be back if it, I don't know if you're still gonna be here, but anyway, I'll join later. Yeah. Okay. See ya. See ya, Maggot. Uh, during uh, meanwhile, what you can do, Nata, is to see if this implementation works, which I am very doubtful. And that kind. Oh, we, we probably didn't save the types. Yeah, we didn't. So what do you think, um, uh, Maggit, Nathan? Should we add uh, a, a let kind here? Or just have the multiple ones in the expression level? Yeah, that's a question, right? Because... I prefer the other way. Because then we don't, we don't, we can group in our when we're reading the expression, we can group all lets in one single play, in one line. Yeah, but then what's the argument for not doing the same with some like, let me see, applications, right? I could have a kind there saying if it's a type application or something. Oh, wait, let me see. We are, we are, we are already doing that with the literals, man. No, no. We, are, we, we could have illiteral and then just copy paste like L unit. Oh, no, sure. But I mean, could we do the same with, for example, abstraction and type abstraction? Let me check. No, we can't because they have different Why? semantics. They have different semantics. Because one has kind and the other one doesn't. Yeah, but that doesn't stop us, right? 
No, yeah, we could change this maybe to an either. We can do Gambiar no. all the way no, 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 no. for a hard content. Not, no, that's... Oh, okay, I see what you. Oh, I see, I see, I see. I think it's gonna be hellish. It's not worth it. The let kind because the pattern matching is gonna be literally the same thing. Just yeah, I got it. Random. I was thinking about like separating and not data type, but what we are doing is different. It's just a flag. Yeah. It could be that way, man. Yeah. Then we, can... we have any requirement that changes? I don't think so, right? I don't also don't think so. So let's go back to the evaluator and let's uh, add here that this is the in one. And I also need to add from this guy, I need to add that kind. And I also need to export that. Okay, let's see what the compiler complains. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So it's complaining about generic arbitrary, um, which is cool. Oh, I know why. It's because we need to copy paste this line and add it here, but for let kind. Okay, variable not in scope for, which means that we are lacking in library. Where does for come from? For data dot traversable. Is that it? Yes. Okay, so let's go here. If this works, I'm gonna be so proud of myself. I barely use the for in the traverse. Okay. Uh, interesting. So this is not an evolve env. This is a map text result value. Wait. This is a map. This is a list. Starts with the being a list, which is actually not what we want. Um, then it's returning a result value. What is a valenv? It is a, ma a text and a value. Huh. Ha 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 ha. So. Mm, how do we do this? No, we don't need this. We can use a fold. Cool. Nathan, are you there? Yes. In this particular case, in this particular case, the order of the fold matters. I think that's going to be yeah, a fold Yeah, but L. we are not doing short circuiting anywhere, right? We are. This, I think this will short circuit. I believe. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't know how to do it. But that's just what I'm thinking. Oh, but that's the one in parallel, right? The first one? No, the in is in the one in parallel, yeah. Okay. Let me think a little bit. Oh, I got it. I got it away to, to, uh, to short circuit. So we need to pick something and then call that labels and expressions. And we're going to do something called unzip. Because then we can save the labels for later. Then we can pick the expressions and they will always return a neither, which means I can re remove this.
Oh no. No, 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 this is fine. This do is already for an either. It will work just fine. Okay, so we're gonna do like that. Awesome. Now it's short circuiting. Now it is. Ooh, okay. Then what we need to do is to zip back. Zip the labels with the evaluated bindings. I'm going to put evaluated expressions instead. Evaluated expressions. Which is also cool. And then this is going to add to the environment. Which is cool. The problem is that this is a list. Right? Which means that we're going to have a problem as this is saying, right? This is expecting to be an environment, but this is a list of a map. Why? Because if you look at this type signature, four, you see, we are passing the TA, the T, which is a traversable, is a list. So the return will also contain a list, you see? And that's the problem, right? That's the problem. So in order to solve that, we just need to replace that with a fold. We're going to fold an envi the environment. So we need a function that I'm going to make it later. We need the, the current environment. <laughs> and we need the zip uh, uh, labels with evaluated expressions. Okay. Now we need to discover which function is this. So it picks the accumulator and an, an item. It does things with that. So the accumulator is a type of env. And env is just a map. So... I guess what is map.insert? Let's go to data.map again. And let's take a look on the type signature of insert. Because maybe we can just flip it and call it a day. Insert. Okay, so it picks a key, picks a value, picks a key, picks a value, and picks the map. Oh, that's bad, because in our case, the foldel provides the, this, the first one is the accumulator, which means that, yeah, we can do it like in a, in a short way, we're going to have to do it manually, okay. Okay, so, what you're going to do, you're going to do map.insert. The item is actually is going to have a name. It's like a label and an expression. Wait, why are we unzipping to zip later? Do we because we are unzipping in order to uh, get the advantage of short circuiting. Because the, when we were doing the other way around, we were uh, we were we had to return a tuple, right? Because we can't lose the label. And because we, we, we had to return a tuple, we will, I, I had to do return here to wrap it in a monad, right? In order to do block to work. Doing this way, and actually this is also wrong because we don't have a label here anymore. Doing in this way, which means that this is also partial, partially stuff, we can just do like this. Doing this way, if one of them breaks, the entire do notation, the entire do block will, will end. Nice, nice, nice. Then we are zipping it back because we need the labels to put into the environment with the now evaluated expressions. Oh, this for is just a way to do a bunch of like bindings? Yes. yes. Not bindings, right? We, we are evaluating a bunch of stuff. So this will return an either. Let me try to explain to you. Hello. Like a bind of. Well, there are binds. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you're, you're talking about this zip? No, the for. The for is to be able to pick the expressions, evaluate one by one with the same environment and short circuiting. Yeah, isn't that bind? Because if you got an error, then the other. Yeah, no, but we are in a do block, man. So it is a bind. <laughs> so, yeah. Basically. Map insert label. <laughs> Expression uh, accumulator, and this will return the new accumulator, which is 
Yeah, we can definitely do this in a clever way, if I'm not mistaken. Receives the accumulator, the item, it returns a new accumulator. Yeah, so we could flip it and then curry it. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah, this clever way sounds hard to read. That <laughs> I need to agree. Uh, maybe it's uncurry. Oh my god. F is equal to this. What is the type of F? Um, what is the type of cu uh, curry? Yeah, it's curry, not in curry. F shadows an existing binding, which is fine. Oh yeah! It is definitely flip.curry, bro. <laughs> this is awesome, man. This is awesome. Oh, I think it's in the wrong order, though. I need to flip it first. Okay, so you receive the accumulator, you receive the tuple, right? And this is gonna be transformed into pick the key, pick the value, pick the accumulator, and return the new map. Yeah, this would work, but I agree with you, it's kind of unreadable. So let's do it in this manner. Okay. Okay, so it is working. No, I, I didn't save it. Okay. Okay, so it's not... Oh, I re written a typo. Okay. Variable not in scope. Evaluated expressions. Evaluated. <gasps> Bro. <laughs> I think it works. At least it compiles. <laughs> Nathan, are you there? Yes. Okay, so what about the plus then? What is the difference between the plus and the normal one again? Functions. So the plus allows us to do to use the other the other stuff. Oh, this is easy. This is easy. I know how to do this one. The only difference is that we need to update the environment in when we are evaluating. We need to update as we go, which is okay. So we're just gonna copy paste all of this because it's kind of literally almost the same. And then we're gonna do this env. We we need to update this guy along the way, right? We need to do that along the way. Yeah, and we also need the like final aim of that results from all that. Yeah, we do need that. So let me think. How can we do that? Okay, so the unzip strategy will not work in this case because we do need the labels inside the four. So it's going to be this. And instead of expressions, it's going to be bindings. Label. How the heck are we going to do that, man? Because you see that it's kind of recursive? Because, Why is because look, this evolve environment, evolve with environment, it picks an environment in expression, right? But does laziness will laziness work in this case? Wait, man. what do you mean by recursive? You mean involving the environment? Yeah. But that's not a problem. No, it is kind of, of a problem. So let me make. I mean, we're gonna have to zip this guy. Wait, why is it the problem we calling involved with environment there? Because no, it's not a problem calling this in here. What I'm saying is, oh, what we want to do is the following. We want to do an evaluation, right? But we want to update the environment as we go, right? Okay. But the problem is that we don't have. The, we are mapping this expression, but this expression is not evaluated yet. We are doing that right now. Uh, 
What is the recursive part of this? Look like, at this code. Look at this code. Haven't. This code will type check. But do you agree that we are mapping the environment, the, the previous one, with the label and an expression that oh, is not no. yet yeah, evaluated? Yeah. That, that's not regarding being recursive, man. That's regarding on the first one. You don't want to do that. No, but I... Uh, wait, can you repeat? That's not regarding being recursive. It's just that on the first one, you don't want to do that because... No, no, but let's oh, suppose okay. it is the second. Let's suppose it is the second. We already have the first one there. No, so yeah, this yeah, is the that's wrong. Line. This is the second expression. It is the same. The same thing. That yeah, I'm I, I got. Yeah, I got what you mean. But that's just because our like approach to this function is wrong. Even because we are trying to add the expression in the environment, right? We can do like this, I guess. So we can pick a bunch of copies of the environment. Zip that with each of the bindings, right? Then... Oh, but this is not carrying over the environment, right? They are totally yeah, isolated. Yeah, I... Ooh. We need some kind of fold, man. We need some kind of fold, man, I agree. We could do the by hand one, so we have short circuit. Uh, just one second, man. Just one second. People are talking to me. Okay, I'm back. So, do you, did you have any ideas? Yeah, that's what I said. We could do by hand, right? So we have the fold and the short circuiting. We could do the fold by hand, you say. So, wait. Okay, so let's do the fold. Let's do the fold. Okay, so how would you do it? Fold L, right? No, no, wait. Uh, there, are, there are two different approaches. So when I mean fold by hand, it, it's doing a recursive function, right? Oh. To do the short circuit. You could use the normal fold, but it would be a ugly fold because you need at least something to say, oh, don't evaluate anymore, right? Oh, I see, I see, I see. Being that because the accumulator oh, okay. changes no, or... So then I don't know how to do it then. So we're going to get an evaluated expression. We're going to call evolve with environment uh, plus... Let's, I'm going to do the base case later. So this is going to be that. So the evolve with environment takes an env and takes an expression x. This will evaluate to an evaluated expression. Because this is a denotation block, it will already short circuit if it fails. Um, which is. Are you sure you want this to be recursive? Like, don't you want the auxiliary function? I, am I sure that the, do I want this to be recursive? Wouldn't that be the same with just an auxiliary function? I'm not sure, because the auxiliary function can just do the following, return you an environment that you will use to do the body, right? No, but we will have that also. So look at here. We have a list of bindings, right? We're going to evolve the first one. If the this first one already fails, everything fails, right? Which ne Which means that we can assume that this is already a value. Okay, this is already a value. So what we do, we call evolve with environment again, right? Uh, update the environment. So we're gonna do, you know, env um, 
é, map dot insert uh, label evaluated expression uh, with the current env so we are updating it and then we need to we need to create the thing which is going to be an elet plus xs body right and oh, then, that's a nice thing, man, because we can use the, like, uh, empty list for the default case, and we don't need to worry about because the parser will not, like, ever return an empty list for us, right? So that's only our stopping case. Like, the parser would not give you that as a... As yeah, a the parser would not allow list. us to have an empty let. Oh, that's a good solution, man. Uh, which means that when you when you are here... What you need to do is just call evolve again, right? Send in the env and the body. Oh man, I think that's really nice. I Which means that I don't one. even need this do, by the way. I involve the thing. I get its value. Holy shit! Oh, that's really good, lemon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's even theory course. <laughs> yeah. We... <laughs> <laughs> we we can't we can't ask for more than that, man. That's it is good, even tail curse. and it works. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I don't have LSP. That. I don't have LSP working, by the way. So I wouldn't say it works because it compiled, but <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. I agree. That that's too. That's a stretch. I would say that's a stretch. Ah, well, that's really nice, man. Okay, so last one. The one that I don't know how to do. <laughs> Which is Yeah, I don't think we I don't think we can do that now, man. Um, bindings. You don't think we can. Yeah, because we need recursion. Well, well why you why do you think about it? I will Oh, that's what I, that was I thought about it. Like, we can't do that without regression. Oh, the type checking is complaining now. The evaluator, 70. Oh, it's because of these guys. Okay, now we just have the non-exhaustiveness in the type checking, which is expected. Okay, so uh, can you repeat why we came to the star? Uh, we don't have recursion, right? We don't have recursion. We do not have recursion. You mean in our language, right? Yes. Why does that matter for us in the evaluator? Because they are mutually recursive. They are mutually recursive. Well, there is also the problem that as, aside of, of uh, out of not having recursion in our language, we need to do the graph stuff. That is not a joke. We do need that. I'm not too sure, man, because because if this because this thing actually forms a graph, and if this is a cyclic graph, then we should. Then the problem will never halt, ever. Yeah, 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 but that's not a problem, because if you do, you can do a if it, uh, recursive function in Haskell, right? Well, so but then my question becomes, the problem why of... does that matter that we don't have recursion in Silverware? Isn't that a, pro a problem that we will be solving right now, at, like literally right now? Uh, I don't know, because, well, we could implement the lab track, but being mutually recursive, be mutually recursive, it's not that. Like, it's something else, right? Something more. No, but it's. Only I know that. No, it one. is only mutually recursive within this this block, man. Okay, <laughs> it's still mutually recursive, right? Uh, and the other thing is, man, we usually think about that in the concept in the context of functions. Does it make sense to think in the context of values when you don't have a lazy length? Like, would that be a problem sometimes? No, I'm not understanding your point about, oh, we don't have recursion in Silverware. Yeah, but 
Okay, so how would we implement that? My idea was, because we don't care if this never holds, um, because we don't care that this never holds, wait, how would I implement that? I would definitely try to evaluate all of those. But uh, suppose one of those use the definition of other, right? Yeah, but then you need to check. Oh, then you evaluate the other first. But if the other uses the one that you're trying to evaluate, I know like... how to do. I know how to do this. Let, hear me up. So how are we gonna do? How are we gonna do? So the steps are the following. Evaluate. By the way, I think we're not even like possible to do it with normal values instead of functions. And that's a bold statement, but okay. Uh, evaluate. The and without using lasers, of course. Evaluate. No, but Lisp does this. So it's definitely possible. With normal values. Evaluate the right, ex the right expression on the binding, in the binding. If that's we trying the first one, right? Yeah, if it refers to something um, that is a e variable that is not in the current inv. Wait, wait, then, are you sure that you don't want to look into the body to see what they are asking instead of trying to evaluate the first? Uh, I'm doing the, na the naive approach first, just to see if this would it would even work. Okay. If it refers to something that is an e, that is a e variable that is not in the current env, then look at the list of labels of the bindings. Yeah, that might already be a problem. No, because we can't do that. We can unzip them. We have total uh, access. No, to no, them. no. Take a look on what you wrote on the second one. So if it is on the current env, then you cannot use the other one that you are declaring mutually recursive. That's a problem. If like, we shouldn't look the... into the env for the variable. Okay, so if, there, if it refers to something that is an e variable, then look at the list of labels of the bindings, which we do have separate access to. Um, if the referred name is there, then um, look up for its bind in the list of bindings. If the referred name is not there, then throw an error. No, no, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> because every variable that you need to use doesn't need to be on that like mutually recursive stuff. It could be also in outside context, right? Something declared previously. No, but if that's the case, we need you need to look first at the environment. Uh, man, like I think the way it should work is the inner ones that are there on the mutually recursive stuff, they should shadow the things that are outside the context, right? So you will use both, but you have to give preference to the one that you just declared, right? Like shadow and stuff, I guess. Okay, so if the referred name is not there, then look for uh, the, the variables in the, the env, right? in the env, and, uh, and finally, if it is and not finally. there, then throw an error. Yeah, that's very implied, right? That's yeah. So I think this would work. <laughs> Evaluate the right expression in the bindings. Yeah, that's not accurate, right? Because we will not like evaluate. We will. We will try. Exactly as we tried here. Oh, we will try. 
Yeah, then you didn't wrote this correctly because you're not saying that you're checking the result of the evaluation. I don't need to. This is a do block. No, but if it fails, then it fails everything. Yeah, then, it like fails, your, your it first fails step. Everything. Yeah, so then you have a problem because okay, you follow the first bind and he's using the name of the last one. Then the first step already fails when it shouldn't. No, 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 wait. This is not fail, right? The, what is fail if this is returns a left, right? That's what I'm okay. calling fail. Because if you look at the example, what what would be fail fail there? It would be something like this. That, I, that first point that I wrote is like something like this, right? This is a fail. And then we are done. This is a yeah, that's okay. So you see that if you are referring to G H J there, you will fail because it's out of it's like unbounded variable. Uh, unbounded like, variable. Yeah. Try oh, to at, do... thi at this moment in time, you mean, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that is the part that we need to change. We need after we. Oh, it's because if it's not in the environment at that moment in time, then this will return a left. But it shouldn't, right? Because if it returns a left... Uh, oh, it, we it can... should because it's not in the environment, right? No, no, yeah, no, I mean, I understand what you're talking about. But then, which that means that we need to do the following. Okay, I have an idea. So you the first look thing, into the body? Yeah, we need to look at the body. So the first thing is to do a let in, then you do a case with evolved environment, doing, oh, I need my stuff here, in the env, uh, I would not, we're not gonna use the body right now, and we well, do need I will get system. some food. Uh, okay, we need the bindings here, which is cool. Then we do a case of with environment, passing the env and passing. We also need another synonym here uh, with a label and an expression. Then we do this, right? Then we do that. Uh, Maybe we actually don't need the unzip because I already have the label on hand. Then if this returns a left, then if this returns a left, then it means that we didn't find it in, it's, it is using an e variable. Holy crap, how are we gonna separate those? God. Holy man. Yeah, this is a problem. How are we going to separate having normal errors than having errors related to not finding variables in environments? Oh no. Back. We have a problem. Oh wait, hear me out. Go. Uh, 
uh, man, uh, if we do something like A and B, and A uses B and B uses A, that should not work, right? Because that is infinite loop, right? Uh, yes. So the answer is one of those should not use the other, right? Yes. So then it's not mutually recursive, right? Yeah, well, if you remove the mutually <laughs> recursive, recursive part, yes, it's not anymore. Oh, yeah, man, the only case in which you want mutually recursive stuff is functions, I guess. No, I don't get your point. If you have A using B and B using A, this is mutually recursive and it is not a function. Yes, but you agree that that like should mean like disallowed because it will always be a like infinite loop. No, but we don't care. You said this is not our problem. No, no, yeah, but you see that you will never use this. No, but in which no, but then you are trying to make sense out of a, a mad a madness like a move full of madness, right? We don't care if it makes sense or not. This is the user user's problem, not ours. No, no, you're not. Uh, how can I say? You are saying okay, I will give you this mutually recursive thing, but it doesn't work for any case of mutual recursion. No, it doesn't work for any case of mutual recursion that makes sense. We have a one corner case that doesn't make sense to use at all, but you you can do it. Or we we gonna have to ha for make it forbidden the parsing or something like that. Uh, like if we are saying okay, values don't, but functions do. Why do we have a lot of values at all? Like if that is not a single case in which they will. Makes sense. Yeah, no, I agree. We, uh, I would ask where we would uh, add that restriction in the parser. Yeah, I don't see a reason why we would. Yeah, man, I think that only works in lazy languages. Yeah, I also believe that also make, that only makes sense in lazy languages. But we still have a problem, though, that I discovered while you were asking. I think? No. So here's the issue, right? If you have an expression in which we are trying to evaluate, there's two possible cases in which this thing will fail in the let star. The first one is a normal fail, right? So you have an expression that doesn't evaluate because they're trying to sum a, sum a number with a string, for instance. But we right. care about this the one second case, which is not a second case, a specific case of the first one, which is, oh, if you had an error about not finding variables in the environment, we care, right? That's the only case we care. But that's the issue. We don't have that level of granularity. If you have a left, we don't know what caused the left. But that's a known problem. Because you can traverse the expression and see what are the free variables. You can traverse the expression and check for free variables. Or unbounded variables. You can traverse the expression. Yeah, but then we would have to make a function for that, right? Yep. Okay, so we are not doing this today. Good. <laughs> 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 By the way, I think it was a bad decision making for us to go into that rabbit hole right now. I kind of disagree. The let in and the let plus was very easy. And fun. Yeah, but we are we are not doing only that, right? No, but if we are if we are mad about that, we can just do this and then go to the types and remove the star for now. I think it's more wise. See? Done. We still need to type the others, right? Yeah, we need to type check the others. But I don't think that's hard. Um, so, yeah. But we already reached the two hour mark. So, I'm actually not sure how easy it is to type check. Let's try to type check in, the, I don't know, five to ten minutes. It's easy. It is easy. Mm -hmm. Are you entirely sure? I would say yes. 
Okay, you would say yes. Okay, so I'm gonna let's do the f the normal let first. So let's go to the typer. Where the heck I'm gonna add that? I think where is the types? Okay, so after e variable. No, no, no here. The abstraction e literal e variable. Okay, so here. Oops, I'm not in Emacs. Yeah. Type check with environment, right? Cool. This guy has another use case, which because we have more stuff in the environment this time around, so I'm gonna do it like that. And then we have a let in with the bindings in the body. Okay, go on, Atta. <laughs> I'm eating. I cannot do typing right now. <laughs> So let me try to think how the heck we, we would type check this madness. Um, I would just type check the body. <laughs> because, oh, that's actually what I said. We don't know the type of this, right? We don't have a type of notation for let's. Which means that I would probably do type check with environment, same env, but body here. Is that correct, Nathan? Ah, uh, no. We no. need to act on the binds. Why? Uh, because otherwise they would be unbounded variables, right? They would be unbounded variables. Oh, you mean for type checking the body, we need to add the, the types of the bindings. Yes. That's correct. That is indeed correct. So we need a fold, I guess. We need a very, very similar fold to what we did in here. At least we don't need short circuit in there. Actually, you can copy paste this thing. Because it's kind of similar. Wait, are you sure? That looks like a lot of complex for what we need. No, because the only difference is that instead of evaluation, we Man. type check with environment. <laughs> so we are checking each one of the expressions. And then we, this is going to be typed expressions. Then we are zipping those again with their proper names. And then we are folding it. Uh, that looks a lot more than we need, man. Uh, because and see, why do you need the far there if you don't want to short circuit? Because I think latency already care of the performance for us, right? I mean, if you fold that and check the thing. Oh, okay, okay. I think I see. Uh, Let's see, it deals with the case of if something fails, you are returning, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is that it? Oh, it's on it's on evolve here. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. You have all the time. Oh, this is not uh, expressions. Oh, this is expression. Sorry. You zip and go adding them. We don't need to thread the environment because those are in parallel, right? We don't need we don't need to do that what you said because this is in parallel, yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, start the things and I'll let the bottom. Well, type check the bottom. Yeah. yeah. I think it's right. Okay, uh, I think the uh, I'm gonna copy paste the other the other one also. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's suppose that instead of uh, normal parallel le uh, let, you have uh, the plus one. So the first thing, oops, is to grab every single place that we're doing evolve and type check. Uh, I'm going to assume we're also going to need the specifics because this environment has more stuff. Um, okay, so let's see. The first thing that we do is 
Oh, so this is typed expression actually. Like this. We type check the environment with the first expression. We're going to get its type, which is correct. And then we type check again, calling it recursively, checking f using the type ex adding the type ex expression that we just uh, acquired with the proper label. We need we need to update the environment with that, which means that this is wrong, right? Because we need to do variable uh, variable types this and this this variable types is this a map yeah this is a map why are you mad why are you mad <laughs> me to the compiler every fucking day redundant bracket okay Then you have the variable types being updated in the current env. We are passing that over. And we are creating the same thing with the let plus, but with this. Yeah, this should work just fine. Of course it doesn't. Of course. Of course it doesn't. Oh, I need to add stuff in the in here. Typer, you are allowed to have the constructors and the types and stuff. Let me separate this a little bit better. Okay, two errors. Uh, ambiguous, ambiguous occurrence of Fodel. Okay, so this is because at some point we are doing unpack, unpack. Oh, we also need the constructor text. Okay, variable not in scope. Oh, typo. Typo. Okay. Uh, we have a four, which which comes from data dot traversable. And again, we don't know if this works. We just know it type checks. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, we have a label, we have a typed expression. What is the map that we are expecting, by the way? We are expecting a type. Right. So it's saying that... What the hell? Variable types? Couldn't match expected type map, text type, with env, whatever, whatever. Oh, I... Th wait, I'm not using the... I am using the, the thing. What the hell? Oh, I'm not. I'm not. <gasps> it works, bro. Well, it compiles. Which, according to uh, Magetta's philosophy, it is what, what we need. Yeah. Cool. How much time this will ask uh, required? This required ten minutes. Okay, that's fair. It starts. Um, let's see if we don't have any files that we didn't save. But I'm gonna finish the recording now. 